Greetings and salutations, travelers of the internet. Welcome to the Lit Round Table. I'm Joseph. And I'm Anna. We'll be your wise or not so wise mentors for today's audio adventure into all things storytelling. You guys, it's season four, episode one. Mm-hmm. And I just had a heck of a time getting that intro out because we took a break like we do. So mm-hmm. anyway, uh, glad you're here. Happy February. Happy February. Um, I do just want to start off by saying that we have made an incredibly good call by scaling back on the podcast episodes because the reading load and schoolwork load, for me at least, has been a lot more. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, yeah, this is good. Um, It was the good call. It was the correct decision. It 100% was. Um, I know that that means you guys don't get to hear our lovely voices quite as often, but hopefully you can hang with us while we go through this particular season. So, yeah. And you'll still get to the regular cadence for the read along stuff that is not changing. So if you still, you know, just, you got to read the books that we're reading. So, (laughs) and then you can still hear our voices that way too. So true. So true. Yeah. Um, yeah. Today we're going to be talking about the hottest villains. In honor of it being February and Valentine's Day coming up. So, yes. Uh, do we want to share how this was born? I think we should. Sure. Sure. I don't even remember. We were watching anime, uh, uh-huh. you and Hope and I and Blake. And um, how did it come up? I honestly don't remember what led to it turning into this conversation. But one way or another, we started talking about who we thought like the hottest. Oh, I think we were talking about specifically the hottest Disney villains. And I made a joke um, and was like, that's obviously Scar, which I'm... Yeah, I'm not serious about, but um, it, it did it lead us into some interesting places. As I was looking online at some other lists for inspiration, Scar was on oh, I'm quite sure a he few was. of them. He's so like you the wouldn't emo be, bad boy. You wouldn't necessarily be weird. No, for putting an animated uh, lion on your list, right? Uh, but anyway, um, no, that's how, that's how it came about. And then Blake was like, yeah, it was like, I was just listening to a podcast episode. So I think you guys should just do a podcast episode about that. Yeah. Which, like, okay. Here we are. So yeah, he and I also had a conversation about, um, Disney sidekicks. Uh, hmm. Blake and I did, I think that could be another podcast episode. So that may be coming. Um, of just Disney sidekicks in general, like our mm-hmm. favorites or like hot Disney sidekicks. No, 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 I don't know no, if no, no, a... no, no, okay. not, no, not hot Disney sidekicks. Just <laughs> okay. Okay. Particularly the animal ones. Like I was going to say, cause a lot of them are animal sidekicks. Yeah. No, no, <laughs> so no, that no. Does Just not about like which ones are like solid and which ones are annoying. <laughs> um, nice. Anyway. Nice. But yeah, hottest, hottest villains. We expanded beyond Disney cause, um, for today. Yeah. So it's any fictional, Mm-hmm. villain mm-hmm. so i would just like to say i think you have an easier time with this because there's not well you have there's a lot there's a lot of hot guy villains out there sure i'm I'm just saying i think you had a wider pool to choose from i'm still i'm still happy with my choices but that's I probably did, I, true but i still had a hard time and you just heard me click my pen because i thought of someone else and marked someone off <laughs> on my list and wrote someone else down <laughs> that is hilarious so um i had a hard time with this uh mm-hmm. mostly because i was having a hard time thinking of any villains at all it was like one of those things yeah. you know where you sit down for a test and I'm like list whatever and you go i didn't know blank. that was a word mind blank <laughs> yeah so we're building our, our Mount Rushmore of hot villains. Yeah, similarly to what we did with just our top, I guess it's four, villains of all time mm-hmm. for Mount Rushmore. This is this is the hottest villains. Mm-hmm. So in, in our humble opinions. Correct. So do we want to like take turns going down the list? Yeah, do I you think like so. one at a time? I think so. Okay. So uh, who would you like to start? Go for it. Okay, now I have to pick which one to start with. So oh, mine are going to be in no particular order, for the record. Oh, my my last one is the George Washington of the Mount Rushmore. My last okay. one is the is the, the, the best. Yeah, um, the one that had the most uh, like 
the strongest vice grip on <laughs> on my soul. Um, Fascinating. So I'll start with this one. So I actually ended up putting a dude on mine. Okay. And you know, I'm not, don't read too much into that, but it's just this is this is someone who I think you will agree with me, and he he might even be on yours. We'll see if this is an overlap one, because okay. this I think is just a a character where you have to admit, regardless of orientation, that he's got it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and that is. Killmonger from Black Panther. Oh, oh my gosh! I didn't even think about Marvel. He's not uh-huh. on my list, but you're a hundred percent right, and I think he probably beats all the people on my list. So I'm a little embarrassed. Eric Killmonger from Black Panther. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Had he was smooth. He had the fashion. He had like the hair. I mean, yeah, he, Michael like, B. Jordan man, is hot. Highly educated, like he was smart, <laughs> yes. like he, man, he ticked every single box. Oh, and it's I'm just, so man, embarrassed. It's like, man, I, I can't, I can't not put you on my list. You were, you were just. Now that you've reminded me yeah. that Marvel exists, I think I have to redo my entire list. Oh my god! Well, don't do that. Well, we'll we'll do some honorable mentions at the end, oh or we can like we can make I edits. Just, or... I told you, I couldn't think of anybody. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. Getting my pen out. Well, I don't know if Loki counts because he kind of has quite the redemption, but he is a villain in a lot of them. So if you put Loki on your list, that's acceptable. Killmonger. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah. Ridiculous. Bucky. Ah. Okay. <laughs> the Winter Soldier. Yeah. yeah. Dude. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Keep going. <laughs> no, we're taking turns. I oh, thought right. we were going to alternate. Well, I didn't yeah, know so... if you had more to say about Killmonger. Um, no, just just that he's he's he ticks every single box. A hundred percent. He's just yeah. I'm so embarrassed to even talk about my list now. <laughs> uh, 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 okay, well, so my first one that I was going to talk about, I was like looking at my DVDs on my because I own DVDs, people. Um, yeah. <laughs> on my shelves, and I have a lot of Stargate DVDs. So I was like, okay, there are so many villains in Stargate. Surely. There are some hot villains. And of course there are. Like all the Gould are objectively attractive. They're, they're supposed they're to supposed be to like be. models, you know. Yeah. Um, so then I was like, well, I can't just have like 50 Gould on my Mount Rushmore. So I had to pick one. Mm-hmm. And I decided on Ball. Bale. Mm-hmm. I think they call them yeah. both. I think they go back and forth if it's Ball or Bale. I think they do. Yeah. Um, but B A. Apostrophe A L. He's like mm-hmm. got that salt and pepper. He's just a very attractive older man. Yeah. Yeah. So he's got like the goatee going on. And he's, he's got... smart. He's like quite a bit smart. Like some of the early Gould make dumb mistakes. Yeah. Um, but he seems to be like a cut above as far as like intelligence goes. It's because I feel like some of the the Gould kind of drank their own Kool Aid, oh, you know, sure. and and started actually believing they were gods. Yes, like like uh, the Apophis and and the Raws and the yeah. Anubis, like all of those. But um, Ball, I feel like, was still pretty self aware mm-hmm. in like you know what they really were, and he, yes. I think, he was more cunning. Yes. You know. Yes. So yeah, good choice. Thank you. See, okay, I got one good choice. There you go. <laughs> so, for my for my next one, I'm just gonna get my Marvel my Marvels out of the way. Mm-hmm. So, these two are Marvel, and so Kate Blanchett is already a very attractive person. Oh yeah. Um, oh my But gosh. then, if you give her black hair and eyeliner and swords, mm-hmm. I mean, come on. Yeah. Uh, Hella from Thor yeah, Ragnarok. Yeah, yeah. That's a great choice. Yep. Very, very, very hot villain. <laughs> oh, here comes the pen. It's another another character is crossed out and replaced. <laughs> Not... I want to know after we go through it, I want to know what the original one was. Like I and I want to know like your thought process behind all of these edits you're making. Uh, I don't know if that one's actually going to replace anyone, but we'll see. Okay. I got to think it through. 
So, yeah, Hella. That's an excellent choice. Thank you. Like, Thank you. Absolutely. Because one of the one of the problems in this is that like our big like franchises that we both really enjoy, Star Wars and Lord of the Rings, mm-hmm. they do not lean into the hot villain thing <laughs> at all. No, the villains are all uggos. They're like scary. Uh, and scary, like Jabba the Hutt. Right. The mouth of Sauron. I mean, I uh, guess you could you could argue in Star Wars that the clones end up being bad guys. I I guess, but, but I mean, look at but the different. main bad guy, Palpatine. Right. Like, ick. <laughs> yes. But like the actor who plays the clones and they're like model oh, actor. Oh, sure. Very attractive yeah. man. Yeah. But I feel like those are that unit of characters is complex because for a while they're good guys and then they're bad guys. Hey man. And if in that case, I feel like at least an honorable mention spot, you can put Django Fett or Boba Fett, you know? Yes. I agree. If they're, if they aren't already on your list, but they're, that they're not, because I didn't think about that, (laughs) but they are hot. The Fets are. Yeah. So they, they get honorable mention for sure. Um, okay. (laughs) My second one that I thought of. Oh, did you I just remembered. One? Yes. <laughs> this is so funny, yes. you guys. It's just us going, oh my gosh, back back and forth. See, some of these episodes, I'm like, we shouldn't even plan because we do the best thinking when we're talking out loud to each other. Yeah. Okay. This one is, uh, I has it. Okay. I'm going to, okay. I'm not going to switch it. I'm just going to do an honorable mention for this character afterwards, Okay. Um, but I'm still going to write it down. So don't for- forget because okay. it's a recent character. Okay. Um, okay. Anyway, your turn. <laughs> so my number two, uh, going along with the Egyptian theme, oh, okay. is Ramses from the Prince of Egypt. Okay. Right? Slay! <laughs> yes. I mean, he uh, is a villain. In the yeah, beginning, he's a brother sure. and, like, not portrayed as an antagonist, but by the end, he absolutely is. Um, For sure. And he is an attractively drawn character. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So... Don't think there's any ifs, ands, or buts about that. There's some buts about it, but there you know. is some buts, but not <laughs> but with the double T. <laughs> um, no, <laughs> uh, and he can I, sing. Yes, we we understood the joke. You didn't. Have he can to sing <laughs> that too. His the his songs, they're good. I forget the name of that uh, actor, but he is in a lot of things. He's Voldemort, remember, Voldemort, and oh. Harry Potter. Well, and he is. Uh, I'm talking about Ramses. I'm not talking about because Voldemort is 100 percent not on this list. No, no. I'm just saying that that is, he's a skilled actor. Yes, he plays good villains. He does. Oh, he was he was the the chef in. Um, oh no that that movie about the, like the the chef guy that like take it's on HBO. Oh, the new one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The table. The menu. The menu. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah, anyway, the skilled actor. He was also sure. Hades in some of those Clash of the Titans movies. Yes. Yeah. He's been in a lot of stuff. He's been, he all been in a lot of things. But yeah. Anyhow, what's your third one? All right. So my third one, uh, this is the one that almost got swapped out. Okay. But uh, it's from anime. Mm. And uh, she is from Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Oh. And her name is literally Lust. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I asked you if we were doing anime, and then I proceeded to not put any on my list, even though... You would have had options, for sure. I absolutely would have. Uh, yeah. I suppose I still do. I've got two spots left, technically. You do. Um, yeah. <laughs> Last-minute changes. But yeah, uh, voiced by the incredible Laura Bailey, at least in the English yes. uh, dub. And yeah, very sultry, very scary, Terrifying. and like she embodies the 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 deadly sin of lust. So of course she's going to be incredibly attractive. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So there we have it. Fascinating. Good choice. Thank you. Oh man. Now All you right. have a decision to make. I do because this next one I was like, <laughs> oh yeah, okay, but um, I'm gonna skip that spot. You know, maybe the reason why you're having such a harder time is because 
you have so many options because be. there are. And that's why I, just I have drew a total blank. <laughs> <laughs> uh... um, my next one I'm going to say is Hook from Once Upon a Time. I know that he ends up being a good guy, but his initial hey, introduction. Yeah. He is a bad guy. He is bad, bad, it. bad. But he is hot. Yeah. He's got that pirate guy liner going on. He absolutely does. Like the black. He's like, like he's an emo coach. band performer stuck in a fantasy role. Like he's steampunk yes. and like he's he's got a lot going on. And I'm glad that yeah. they converted him to a good guy so that. Yes. He could stay in the show a little longer because I don't think he was intended to be in the show as long as he was. So. No. But then the fans all Loved had him. crushes on him. So they had to, <laughs> they had they to write him in. Which was yeah. a great choice because he's also funny. And very witty, um, cunning. Mm-hmm. Like he's he's a good character, good actor too. Yeah. So, anyway, yeah, Hook. Once upon a time. Nice. Who's your George Washington? I totally see it. All right, so this is the number one spot, the George Washington. So, and this is a character that a lot of people will agree with me mm-hmm. that they had crushes on growing up. So this was like mm-hmm. a childhood crush character. Mm-hmm. And that is Shigo from Kim Possible. Yeah, yeah, I can I can see that. Um, yeah, just she's like all kinds of curves, but also there's like a there's like an interesting like goth tough. aesthetic also. Yeah. Um, and the like the the attitude. Yeah. Like everything, the everything, the the sass. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Just checked every box and my <laughs> my my younger self was had quite the crush i think this is the on only Shigo. character that came up in that original conversation that is hanging on yeah and making it to this conversation which i think is great good choice thank you so my last one who's it gonna be it's not it is not gonna be like a um george washington like yours. Like, Shigo is 100% like a good choice. Because um, Shigo, for me, is, is almost into like first fictional crushed yeah. territory. You know? For sure. Shigo is my Han Solo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, I don't, I have all these honorable mentions now, and I'm not sure which one to swap out for the one. I you know what? Put. You, can, you can just close your eyes and point. <laughs> and. <laughs> No, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to say my last one is going to be the White Witch from The Chronicles of Narnia, specifically Tilda Swinton. Oh, that would have been a that great version. Yeah. Yeah. She is ethereal. And yeah. scary as I'll get out. It's a great like, pick. Absolutely terrifying. Mm-hmm. But also incredibly attractive. Mhm. Which is part of the problem. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yep, yep. I, and yeah, she has a I, very stim- similar aesthetic to Kate Blanchett. She's like the opposite sure. of the Hela character. Yeah, they're kind of like yin and yang looking, aren't yes, they? Yes, yes. Um, so once you said Kate Blanchett, that was Hela's. You said Kate Blanchett's Hela. I was like, oh my gosh, Tilda Swinton's White Witch. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Has to be on the That's list or on the honorable mention. So Yep. That's a great pick. Yeah. Yep. So. Okay. I've got Ball, Ramses, Hook, and the White Witch. And I'm rocking Killmonger, Lust, Hela, and Shigo. Yeah. Yeah. I'm happy. I'm happy with mine for mm-hmm. sure. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the honorable mentions. Yes. <laughs> Do you want to just hear my thought process through all of these? Sure. Sure. Okay. Um, so I originally had Khan from Star Trek on my list, mm-hmm. um, which is like super old, going way back. Unless you went with the reboot where it was Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> That's true, but I don't. I don't think that Benedict Cumberbatch is that is as hot as the original Khan. <laughs> yeah. That's fair. Um, like, there's something about the original Khan. He's like so confident 
He's got a lot of like suave. I don't think that anything. And he's got and he's got that like I'm having a hard time saying names today. He's got that like seventies hair. Yeah. There's just Uh, like seventies wrestler vibe. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. You know? Yeah. Um and then I also had well he got crossed off and replaced by Hook. Because once I thought of Hook, Mm -hmm. I was like, oh he has to be on the list. (laughs) Yeah. Um and then I also originally had Jack Norrington from the Pirates of the Caribbean. Not okay. in the first two okay. movies, but in the third movie when he loses his wig and he kind of becomes a good guy. Yeah. But, you know, that was underneath the whole time. But I suppose... For sure. I think I, think I made the right choice in taking him off and replacing him with the White Witch because... I agree. Um, it's really when he starts to, to act... In support of Elizabeth and Will and those guys that is hotter. Yeah. Um, Because he's then he's like anti-establishment, right? He loses Mm -hmm. the wig. He loses the like uniform and he's just like gritty. He joins the rebels until the last one when he like. Yeah. Re-ups and then. Yeah. Anyway. (laughs) So, yeah. Once you mentioned Marvel, like Killmonger, obviously. Uh, yes. Um, but Loki, mm-hmm. um, like Tom Hiddleston is a very attractive man. Mm-hmm. He's a little pasty as Loki, but <laughs> it's okay. And Bucky, the Winter Soldier, like at, at yeah. when he's in his villain, he's still he's still incredibly attractive. So that Winter Soldier walk. That, oh my gosh! That, like that, yeah. I can't even think of it. It's not even walking. It's like a prowl. It's like yes. <laughs> yes. hunter, hunter yes. walk, you know? Yes. Um, and then the Fets, the Django and Boba Fett, like. Yeah. Duh. Yep. Yep. Um, also, okay. I feel weird about this one and you're going to know exactly why I feel weird about it when I say it. Okay. Because there's a, there's a group of fandom that is weird about this character. And I do not want to be associated with okay. that. I'm so excited. Um, what character is this? Well, who do you think it is? It's anime. I have no... Oh, Does no. Does that help narrow it down? Um, it's anime. Mm-hmm. How old is this character? Adult. Okay, okay. Like, um, super adult. Super adult. Are they old? No. But oh, like okay. compared to the rest of the cast. What fandom? The only fandom I can think of as having like some toxic elements right now is like My Hero Academia. But um, and it's Tezuka from Hunter Hunter. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Okay. Like I'm not into clowns. <laughs> uh, I would put at Trollo... All. I'd put Crollo above Hisoka. Yeah, Crollo is all, but you have Hisoka is around longer. We know him better. I yeah. absolutely hate him. Yeah, but for sure, there is. I when he's the villain in the arc, I'm like, oh, I'm glad he's around again. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, not a thing. I don't have a thing for clowns at all. But and in general, I do not like clowns. Would prefer to not have clowns. <laughs> In my media. Yeah. But he's okay. I can make an exception for. So you're telling me that Pennywise didn't make your list. Oh my gosh. No. I no honorable wanna, mention. I don't even want to watch it. For Pennywise. Um, um, I had, so I have like three honorable mentions. Okay. That I wrote down. Um, more could probably come to mind, but the one that I thought of uh, was Shin Hati from the Ahsoka show, the Padawan oh. for, uh, yeah. Cause the, yeah, the, she was like a lot of people, uh, were kind of swooning for her, at least on, on TikTok for like, there's like a lot of, uh, sure. a lot of love for, for that character for sure. That's fair. She looks like, um, a combination of Maddie Ziegler, the the dancer that does the dancing for mm. Sia, or used to. I don't mm-hmm. think she does anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, and Aurora 
the yes. artist that um, is featured in Frozen Two. Yes. Um, she, her. I feel like. I feel like whoever designed her character was like, these two, we want them featured somehow. Mush, mush them yes. together. <laughs> um, I also put, so this is controversial. I also put Daenerys Targaryen because she definitely turns into a villain in the last season. Okay. Well. But it's controversial. I did because, think of her. Yeah. Um, but also was like, I don't know if I have it in me to Yeah. argue that Danny is a villain. Yeah. In the show, she definitely was in the end. But I think in she the books, was a villain. It's complicated. Yeah. It's complicated. I think she might have been a villain the entire time from a certain point of view. From a certain but point of view. But also a hero from a certain point of view. And it's real muddy. Controversial. Yes. Yes. Um, and the last one that I had for an honorable mention is Phantom from Phantom of the Opera. I feel like, oh. well, that one, that one was more, I just put down because I feel like uh, he is, he would be on a lot of people's Mount Rushmore's probably for hot villains. Yeah. Okay. So that like opens up a whole door of like musical villains that I hadn't even thought of. Mm -hmm. Like Javert. Okay. Not from the movie. I recently saw Les Mis, um... I mostly just don't want to associate this with Russell Crowe. I'm saying the character. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, not specifically Russell Crowe. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I recently saw a production of Les Mis. And the guy that played Chavert and, like, the the dedication and the... I don't know. Yeah. He's not likable at all. But he is powerful. Mm-hmm. What other Disney, what other, not Disney, musical villains are there? The Phantom is like a really good mention. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, there's some more like modern musicals like Hades Town, and mm -hmm. uh, but I've never seen them, so I can't really speak to. Aaron Burr, he's the antagonist. Yeah, Thomas Jefferson. <laughs> also, an, kind of, yeah, also an antagonist. Mm -hmm. I think Burr is like the more solid antagonist. Yeah. But there's yeah, there's some there's musical options for sure. Hmm. Like state like stage musical. Yeah. Interesting. How about like Gaston? He's a He's so misogynistic, it overrides. But Anna, no one fights like Gaston. No one And that's just fine. <laughs> no What a one. tool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how about Gaston? As what's his name, Luke Evans. Oh, okay. Uh huh. I mean, Luke Evans <laughs> is very attractive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I cannot deny that. But something about the character of Gaston. Yeah. No. That's that's fair. Which feels validating. I can see past people's exterior. <laughs> Well, we should talk really, really quick about the thing that we discovered, and that was well, we mentioned it briefly before, the the whole idea of like villains being like gross or ugly, mm -hmm. you know, um, and what that how how that's a trope that I feel like is starting to kind of go away because a lot of the, the answers that we picked for this are like more uh, modern, mm -hmm. uh, like like character creations. But if you look at like Lord of the Rings, a lot of the Star Wars characters, um, some more like traditional uh, fictional media, it's like the villain, the villain yeah. is depicted as, I don't know. Like, I don't know. We didn't, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, I know what you're trying to say. But also, when we talk about like Errol Flynn movies, the villain is always Basil Rathburn, Rathbone. And that is not a bad looking dude. That's a great point. He's a very yeah. attractive man. I guess, and I guess in my mind. he's also incredibly smart. Yeah. I guess in my mind, I'm thinking fantasy specifically. I think yeah. with fantasy, that's more prevalent. But yes, yes with, that kind of, with that kind of movie, for sure. That's definitely. Like Captain Blood. Mm, it's historical. It's not fantasy. It's his, yeah, it's not, it's not fantasy. His, yeah. Yeah, there's no magic. I guess Robin Hood kind of in my brain gets like classified as fantasy sometimes, but it's really not. It's just it's the not. King it's... Arthur 
For the it's folklore. King, yeah. It touches on folklore. Yeah. In a way, but it's not. I mean, it is Robin Hood is folklore, but I mean, it. Um, There's no fantastical elements. No, yeah. Nothing supernatural or magical. Right, right. And it's not in a fantasy setting. It's in Correct. a real place setting. It's Correct. just a. There's, uh, it's just that character. there's been um, reiterations of Robin Hood that does make it fantasy that I have to like remind myself that mm. the base mm-hmm. story is not. But yeah. Anyway. Um, but yeah, I think you're right in like traditional, older fantasy, speculative fiction, sci-fi, the villains mm-hmm. are typically coded specifically for the outsides to reflect the inside. Yeah. To make it super obvious what we're dealing with. Mm-hmm. And you even see it like in Star Wars when Palpatine electrocutes himself and mm-hmm. like reveals his true nature. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like he was masking it, but that's what he looks like on the inside, you know? Right. It's like a, it's a trope for sure. Yeah. Definitely, and I think that it has its it has its place. But I, I like I like the villains that are some like sometimes I like the villains that are harder to spot that could pass as like you don't like you don't know they're a villain just by looking at them, you know. Sure. And I like sure. I like heroes that also you wouldn't know they are a hero just by looking at them. Where like maybe maybe a hero is a little rough around the edges, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm. So. Yeah. Um. Right, because our go-to is usually Lord of the Rings. Like, if we can't think of a character or something, it's like, well, there's an answer in the Lord of the Rings somewhere. But there really aren't any villains in the Lord of the Rings that you can yeah, say are attractive. So. Yeah, not when they're villains anyway. No, not when they're true villains. They might be antagonists. But, well, um I think you could make a case for Sauron because he's a shapeshifter. But not in the in the time not of the, in this the War of the Ring. Form. Yeah, he lost the ability to do that. Right. But even even then, though, it's okay. like he's so he's ta- stuck okay, in his okay. true form, you know, of being. I'm gonna add an honorable gross. mention from Rings okay. of Power. Halbrand in Rings of Power. He's pretty attractive. Yeah. You also don't know that he's a villain until like last episode. Late. Yeah. <laughs> um. Or at least yeah. don't have it confirmed. So, is it Halbrand? Halbrad. It is. It's is. Halbrand. Okay. Halbrad is a Rohirrim. I think a character. It's a character. Maybe. Yes. Yeah. It's ha- it's Halbrand for sure. Halbrad is the one that I really like. He's not a Rohirrim, but he's in that part of the two towers. Is he great company? Yes. Okay. Yes. I really liked that character. Didn't wasn't in it enough. Anyway, we digress. Yeah. So, yeah, villains. Villains. So, who uh, guys? Tell us in the description who are your top four hottest villains. Don't be gross though. <laughs> Don't be gross though. <laughs> uh, it's an important disclaimer. It is. We're not trying to thirst after people. No. You know. We don't need any thirst trap comments or thirst comments. No. no. But uh yeah, I'm I'm still pleased with my with my answers for okay, sure. You've got good answers. Absolutely. So uh we sh- we we've got some stuff to talk about with what we've been yeah. reading, watching, playing because it's been a little bit. Mhm. Mhm. Mm-hmm. Um would you like to go first or would you like me to go first? I can go first. Go for it. So for reading, we have started The Obelisk Gate, mm. the second book in the Broken Earth trilogy. I had mm-hmm. to think about what it was called. Um, and that has been very good so far. Uh, we, we just started the read-along, so you guys can start that along with us. If you haven't yet, it's not too late. Mm-hmm. But So I've been reading that. Also, since last time we recorded an episode, I have finished and collected all of Wotakoi that... It's a, oh, it's an, an it's, oh, a, it's a manga. Oh, oh. I can see it now. That mm-hmm. was not what I thought you were going to say, so it threw me off. But okay. What did cool. you think I was? I thought you were going to say saga, which I was like, you've already told us that you got the latest of saga. Yeah. But, no. I've. Nope. Wotakoi. I finally. Wotakoi. Well, I st- I had started reading it again, and then I couldn't stop. 
Nice. And now it's over, and I am sad. Oh. Does it have, <laughs> that a, one was does it my, have an anime adaption? adaptation? It does have on, I think it's, it is on Amazon, oh. and I've been meaning to watch it, but it's not complete. It's only like a season, and it doesn't go through the whole story, mm, okay. um, which is sad. Yeah. But I think I'm still going to have to watch it sometime. For reading, though, that's pretty much it. Because, well, I mean, I've also been doing school reading, but, you know, it's been a lot of historical things. Sure. And Out of a textbook or articles? Interesting. Or... A textbook and other, like, articles and, like, primary source stuff. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, so that's... Anything in particular that you want to share that you've learned that you were like, whoa, mind blown? Oh, I mean, I I already told you about this, mm-hmm. the, the busy year that was 1804. Mm-hmm. And that was the year that Alexander Hamilton was shot by Aaron Burr. It was also the year that Napoleon was declared emperor in France. And it was the year that the Lewis and Clark expedition started. Wild. So I did not realize all three of those things happened in the same year. Yeah. And it was very fascinating. It seems like they ought to be spread out a whole lot more. Yeah. Hmm. So... Anywho, anywho um, that's pretty much it for reading, though. For watching, we have started watching Fruits Basket mm-hmm. for our anime. Uh, ho- there's a lot of there's a lot to talk about for watching. Hope and I have been watching season two of Jujutsu Kaisen, which I have already seen, but she hadn't seen. So we've been uh, watching that. Um, we we'll usually do like an episode a day while we're eating dinner. Nice. We've also been watching the Percy Jackson show on Disney Plus, and that okay. just finished. That they just had their season finale. How was and that? We watched that. It was good. I think that uh, the actors did a really good job. The casting was really good. Um, I mean, pacing wise, I, there are things that I think could have been better. I feel like the story didn't have to take that long. Sure. To to tell. But um, overall, I liked it. I thought it was good. Um, And another anime that has just recently started that we've been watching is Solo Leveling, which is actually an anime adaptation of a Korean manhwa. Okay. And I have all the volumes for that, and I have been reading that as the volumes get released, and I love it. It's great. It's kind of a... It's kind of similar to, like, the time I got reincarnated as a slime or, like, Rising of the oh, Shield sure. hero. Sure. Where, like, there's these interesting, like, level up, like, almost game-like mm-hmm. mechanics and aspects to it. It has, like, isekai elements. Okay. But it's, it's still uh, unique. Cool. But anyway, they, they found a way to put a unique twist on it. And I like it a lot. Nice. So I've been watching that. Also still keeping up with Critical Role. I have. <laughs> Sorry. Um, it's fine. I totally, I totally understand. I totally get it. Um, I'll so, get there. so yes, you will. You will. Critical Role, of course. And I feel like that's just about it for the watching because a lot of those were shows that, like, were like six episodes deep now in solo leveling, but I've only just now gotten to talk about it. So like, there are things sure. we've been watching for for a while now. Um, yeah, for, uh, playing, I'm still playing a lot of Baldur's Gate 3, <laughs> may or may not be on my third playthrough. Whoa. Uh, I have never played a game that is so replayable. Yeah. It is one of the most replayable games I have ever, ever played because there's so many different classes and so many different, like, ways you can take the story. Sure. It's like you get... You get FOMO, like watching other people play. And it's like, oh, I want to play as a bard. And so then you go make a bard character and you got to play it again. So yeah. that's been really fun. And of course, still playing regular old D&D, which that has been an absolute blast. We have had some of the most fun sessions I think we've ever had in the last few. That's awesome. Um, because one of them involved a couple characters teleporting onto the back of a dragon. Whoa. Did you take the dragon egg to the back of a dragon? Uh, technically, yes. It was in that character's backpack when it happened. Well. <laughs> but it was 
it was like the circumstances where the dragon had a dragon rider. They were trying to steal something of ours. And so we were trying to get the thing back and two of the characters teleported onto the dragon's back. Didn't realize it's a, it's an adolescent dragon. It's not super big. So it doesn't have like the biggest carrying weight and that made it hit its carrying capacity. And they teleported onto the dragon's back and then the dragon fell (laughs) from the sky. Oh no. Oh man. It's okay. It was a mean dragon. It was evil. Hmm. But, uh, and then in the, in the last session we played, we ended up, like bottlenecking and clearing out an entire dungeon. It was just, they've been really, really cool fighting moments where we, yeah. we feel like a more like well-oiled machine. Like we're starting right. to actually figure out the best way to play, like sure. casting hold, hold person on the big bad guy to paralyze them while the barbarian comes in and just wails on them. Sure. It's a very effective strategy that me and the barbarian have discovered. Yeah. <laughs> so awesome. uh, that has been very, very fun. So, yeah, um, that's going to that's going to basically be it for playing. I mean, we we did have some friends over to play Jackbox one time. We had uh, someone come over to play uh, Dominion and mm-hmm. some other board games, Small World. Mm-hmm. So that's been that's been fun, too. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, man. All right. So that's, that's the updates for me. How about you? Okay. Well, so for me, um, I am taking a fantasy and youth media class. So I Mm -hmm. am reading a lot. Mm -hmm. So be prepared. (laughs) Um, so for reading, yes, we did start the obelisk gate, um, by NK Jemison, which is amazing. And you guys should a hundred percent be reading this series with us. It is Mm -hmm. so unbelievably good. Um, in addition to that, let's see, I got to go back in my mind, in my mind. Well, I just finished reading Pet, um, whose author's name escapes me, but it's a YA fantasy. I will of course have it in the description with the author's name, but mm-hmm. fascinating. The conversation we were just having in this episode about, um, old fantasy villains being coded so that you can easily see that they're like, it's gross on the inside as they are on the outside. And mm-hmm. this book it's in this, like, it's set in a world like ours, but in the future, or, like, it's set in, the, in the, like, a version of our world where all of the monsters have been eradicated. And so the main character is, like, trying to figure out what angels look like, because they're the ones that eradicated the monsters, and what monsters look like. And she can find pictures of angels, but she can't find any pictures of monsters. Mm-hmm. Or, like, depictions of them. And it turns out that that's because the monsters are their unseen things in humans. Mm -hmm. So it's, like, addiction and abuse and, like, all these things. Um, Interesting. Which is kind of a reveal, but there's it's so good. Yeah. Um, And, like, very... uh, related to what we were just talking about as far as like villains goes and monsters. Mm -hmm. Um, also read the witch boy, which is a graphic novel. Uh, Mm -hmm. I only read the first one. Um, but it's a series of three right now. Um, that was really good about, uh, it's, you know, a fantasy set where, um, boys become shapeshifters and girls become witches. But, um, Aster really wants to learn how to be a witch like his mom and sister. And it's really good. It's really Mm. cute. Like the, the drawing style is really cute. Um, but very good. And then also read a children of blood and bone. I don't remember the the author names of any of these. Sorry guys. (laughs) Because I've been reading them so quickly. Um, a children of blood and bone. It was a YA fantasy that came out in like 2016 or 2017 And it kind of started the movement of, um, like, more diverse fantasy in YA. Okay. So. Nice. um, It's also really good. I'm a little annoyed with myself that it took me this long to read it. Oh. Because, oh my gosh. So highly recommend that. Cool. Um, Oh, The Mother of the Sea, which is heartbreaking. (laughs) Oh. Because it's, um, it's like about a slave ship 
Mm. Mm-hmm. So, but it's very good. Um, and then, gosh, what did we read the week before that? Maybe that's it. Maybe that, well, those are the four we've read so far. <laughs> uh, um, I also read a picture book called Una, um, which is mm-hmm. about a black mermaid, and it is so stinking cute. Nice. The, 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 like, the illustrations are beautiful. So good. Mm-hmm. Um, also read a book called Frank and Crayon, which is another graph, another, uh, picture book, um, with Blake and his daughter. Ooh. We also read A Possum Come Knockin'. Do you remember that oh, book? Oh, wow. It's throwback. Yeah. <sighs> so good. That's um, a good one. Nugget and Fang. And there's a whale in the bathroom. So we're getting into picture books because I got a little girl that I'm spending a lot of time with. So yeah. that's fun. For watching, for class, I had to watch Inside Out, which I hadn't seen in forever. I forgot how good it is. Oh, my gosh. It's really good. It makes me want to cry. Yep. It's amazing. And I can't wait for the second one. Um, we also had to watch Spirited Away. Oh, which is also so beautiful. Good. We've talked about this many times. We both love it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Blake and I went and saw Godzilla minus one again in theaters because it was back. So he's on nice. again. We took his grandma. It was really fun. It's great. We have also watched been watching The Owl House, which is, have you seen that? Mm-mm. It's a Disney animated kids show, but it's okay. very good. Okay. Like, it's so cute. The Owl House. Yeah. It's about a, it's a portal fantasy. So a girl from our world uh, mm-hmm. ends up hanging out with Ida, who lives in the Owl House, and she's a witch, mm-hmm. and she's learning magic from her, and it's really, nice. it's really good. Uh, animation style is similar to Kim Possible. There are okay. elements of it that I'm like, this looks like... The same animators, maybe. I have no idea if it is. But. Okay. Um, we watched some Gravity Falls. Um, oh, I love Gravity Falls so much. Yeah. That's such a good show. You, hadn't ha- you haven't seen it before, right? No. Oh, it's so good. They were watching... I love that show. They're, sometimes, so, the Owl House, they've gone back and started from the beginning with me. <laughs> Gravity Falls, mm-hmm. we were just in the middle, so I need to like, go back and... Start oh, the yeah. for myself. Yeah. Um, but we keep watching like random episodes of that. And then there was another show that we started, we watched a couple episodes of yesterday that I don't, I don't remember what it was called. Star. I can't remember if it was just called Star, if there was more to the title. Mm-hmm. I'll look it up. Um, and uh, we've been watching Godzilla movies, like other Godzilla movies. Oh, like some movies. of the other ones? Yeah. Like nice. um, the one with Brian Cranston. Is that just Godzilla, I think? Yeah. And yeah. then um, the next one that features Millie Bobby Brown. So that's probably uh, Godzilla King of Monsters. Yes. Because that's the one with uh, Ghidorah, the, the big dragon, the three-headed dragon in yes. it. Right? Yes. And then after that is Godzilla versus Kong. Right. We have not watched that one yet, but it's next yeah. on our mm-hmm. list. We watched an episode of Monarch um, on Apple TV, which was is like the show spinoff from those three. Um, Didn't know that existed. That's interesting. The first episode was very good. And then I was like, but I'm also very confused because I hadn't seen Godzilla King of Monsters yet. So um, (laughs) I'm sure it will make more sense after we finish that trilogy. Um, Did I talk about. um, Sorry, guys. Oh, Bluey. Bluey. Have you heard of Bluey? No. Oh. You're clearly not on parenting TikTok. <laughs> nope. <laughs> okay. Even if you do not have children, you will appreciate Bluey. It's an Australian animated show. Each episode is like six minutes long. It's about a family of dogs. And they just go... They just hit on some like really poignant life lessons. In a very Mm -hmm. cute and approachable way. Nice. And it's so cute. And it is so good. I watched a couple episodes with Blake and his daughter. And then I was just like watching it on my own. (laughs) 
funny how that works, isn't it? And just like loving it. It's very good. I highly recommend. Nice. And then for playing, I'm also playing Baldur's Gate 3 because Blake has it. <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's so So good. I have a character. Um, I did just have my first hour of playing without making any progress because I died in a fight twice. Yep. So Blake was like, this happens a lot. <laughs> Especially in your first playthrough. Yes. Um, I'm also very glad to be playing with him because I think that you and I have talked about this a little bit. The mechanics are a little clunky. If you're yeah, if you're unfamiliar, yeah, yeah it's um because it uses every possible button on the PS5 controller. Pretty much, yeah. And it's, it's not necessarily intuitive. Yeah. How to get to them? So. I'm very glad to be playing with him because he can be like, oh, this is how you go to camp and take a long rest. Mm -hmm. And like, this is how you get to this menu so you can check on these stats or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, this is how you get to your actions. Because that, honestly, because when we grew up, you hardly ever used the trigger buttons unless you were shooting something. Mm -hmm. They did not yeah. pull up menus. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, you can also like customize those those wheels with your actions on them and that can be helpful too because sometimes it you gets can. really uh, yeah you can that. well anyway you can customize it's, them. it's been a huge learning curve but i'm very intrigued by it so it's so good i also really like just opening boxes I just run around and open every single box i think it probably <laughs> yeah. annoys the heck out of like uh, you're gonna find a lot of rotten it food he's so kind and i don't think he's annoyed at all but i'm like i just want to see what's in these barrels yeah. Give me what's in the sometimes bag. you get pleasantly surprised and you find some good stuff. Yeah. Right. And sometimes you find a rotten cheese wedge. You know, that's a lot of the time. It's just rotten tomatoes. <laughs> that's good to know. Yeah. Um, I did talk to a squirrel. Because I'm a <laughs> druid. My character's a druid. Right. I think that there's like, is there a squirrel at some point? Yeah. It wasn't like that. It was just a okay. random. I talked to a random animal. And it was That's fine. cute. Love it. Um, we also tried playing Overcooked 2 with, Blake's, with Blake and Blake's daughter. And mm -hmm. y'all, that game is hard on adults. It's stressful. It's very hard on six-year-olds. Yeah. Would not recommend. <laughs> <laughs> it was very yep. stressful. Um, yep. And she was getting so frustrated. I felt so bad. Oh, um, poor, poor which girl. like it, it just reminded me of all the times that we have played and how frustrated we were getting yep so um, and like our kitchen caught on fire several times anyway it does happen it was a lot um, they're also playing a game called Spirit of the North have you heard of that mm -mm. it's very cute so we played that a little bit yesterday as well you're like a little fox that runs around and Oh, that's cute. It is cute. So, Have I heard of that? It sounds familiar. There's a second one coming out soon-ish. Hmm. I don't know if it sounds familiar because you've mentioned it to me outside of the podcast or if I've actually oh, seen also something. Oh, Blake mentioned it. Oh, but yeah. Anyway. We're watching Fruits Baskets, which I did not include in my list of... Anyway, there's a lot happening. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. Well, if that wraps it up for you... Mm -hmm. I guess, so for next, at the time you're listening to this, next week there will be another read-along being uploaded. So yes. definitely uh, get started on the Broken Earth trilogy. Life-changing. Do it. Groundbreaking. Mm -hmm. it's, <laughs> it's called the Broken Earth trilogy. <laughs> that book has, there's so many groundbreaking elements in that book. Okay. You're such a dork. <laughs> Uh, it's so true though it's yeah it's, I've been known to dork mm -hmm. every now and then mm -hmm. so alrighty I guess uh, until next time again comment below let us know who your Mount Rushmore of hottest villains would, would be mm -hmm. tell us who we missed who we forgot about but until next time go read something cool and we'll talk to you next time later bye